Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to focus on the theme of hopes and dreams in Of Mice and Men. So the key characters that closely link to the theme of hope are Kelly's wife, Lenny and George and Candy. Um, you could also look at Crooks as well, maybe not a character that stands out as much, but do, he does have a glimpse of hope in the novella, which I will focus on. So some of the key scenes, um, the opening chapter, when it talks about Lenny and George's hopes for the future, their hopes to own their own land, their own ranch, their own animals. We have the scene with Kelly's wife when she talks about her dreams of Hollywood um, and being an actress, and she says, oh, maybe I still could do it. We have the scene in chapter three with Candy, George, and Lenny and their dreams of owning their own ranch. And then Crooks in chapter four, although very temporary, um, he just mentioned his hope of potentially joining the men, um, joining these men who are hoping to have their own land, and he offers to work on that. Some of the key quotations, I've only got a few here, but I am going to look at those in depth and think about how they link to the characters' hopes and dreams, um, even if they are short-lived. And then links to the context. The main one maybe that stands out is the American dream. The men might believe in the idea that in America, if you work hard enough, you can succeed. Think of the, the key quote, I guess, which was their life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. The idea that no matter where you're from, your background, your race, your gender, that in America you will have equal opportunities to achieve. Um, I'm not going to talk about that that much here because you can look at your revision notes on the American dream and think about what is Steinbeck trying to say about that. Is he criticising it through the novel, through the themes and the characters? Could also link it if you were to talk to, about Kelly's wife to the role of women. Kelly's wife dreams of a life of freedom, but one could question how much freedom she would have um, if she was to be an actress. For that, you need to see the critical theory on Curly's wife. We did look at that a lot in class last year. Okay, then the next one, if you were to mention Crooks, then you could think about how he, his character and how Steinbeck through his character might be defying racial segregation. By suggesting that he could join Candy, George and Lenny, he is perhaps challenging racial segregation yet he is quickly reminded of his place within society. But that might be his whole um, to break down those barriers between him and the white men on the ranch. So key quotations then. For Lenny, he says at the beginning, but it is repeated through the novel as well, is about his desire to live off the fat of the land. At the start of the novella, George and Lenny are hopeful for their future. Their American, to dream, uh, their American dream to so it might seem quite mundane um, to simply have some freedom and to own some land. It seems like a very, very simple goal and ambition for the future. To live off the fat of the land means to make their own produce that the earth provides them and to achieve that through their own hard work. At the moment, they might feel like they're doing all of the hard work, um, they're getting paid very little, and it is the boss that is is profiting from that hard work. So in a sense, they want to be their own boss. No, so not that they're not going to work hard, but they will reap more of the rewards from that hard work. Lenny again repeats his dream at the end of the novella. Um, but sadly, we discover that even the most mundane dreams are unattainable in the harsh environment of America during the Great Depression. And even the most simple dreams might be out of reach. Uh, remember, though, that Lenny, at the end of the novel, as he is looking, looking to, into the distance, we know George has stood behind him with the gun. He's about to point to his head, but he does repeat this dream again. So Lenny still, he still dies believing in that dream and looking forward to, to the future, as ironic as that is. They looked at one another, amazed. This thing that they'd never really believed in was coming true. George said reverently, Jesus Christ, I bet we could swing her. 
His eyes were full of wonder. So this is a quote from chapter three. So at this point, when Candy, George and Lenny believe they can unite to buy ranch, they are completely overcome with emotion. That adjective amazed, pairs with the metaphor eyes being full of wonder, illustrates their shock. And um, because they have perhaps believe for the first time that their dreams could become a reality. And they're staring at one another in, in amazement in equal measure. Despite George and Lenny's dream of living off the fat of the land at the beginning of the novella, we now discover they never really believed. So this conveys how migrant workers, although they might hope for better working and living conditions, the opportunity to be their own boss, um, that might actually be fruitless. You know, ultimately, their, their dreams and aspirations will be limited by the position that they're living in. But, so they might have had these dreams, but that's maybe all they thought that they were, just pipe dreams. The idea that it actually could come true fills them with hope and wonder. By uniting the three men, Steinbeck might be challenging the hostile nature of migrant workers and instead promoting the idea that men should work together as opposed to competing with one another, which migrant workers would do in the 1930s America. They would compete for work because there was such mass unemployment. So that hostility that at times we see on the ranch, maybe Steinbeck is, is challenging that, and then instead he does promote friendship and loyalty throughout the novella. This is a quote from Curly's wife. And it is just before she dies. So she said, I tell you, I ain't used to living like this, she tells Lenny. I could have made something of myself, she said darkly. Maybe I will yet. In chapter two, we've got Curly's wife is described as having ostrich feathers in her hair. So with that, you could liken that to flapper girls. The ostrich um, is a bird that can't fly. That could signify how she's confined, uh, confined to the to the household, her domestic role, how she's trapped by her husband, who seems to have complete control over her, or at least tries to, where the feathers is what flapper girls could wear in their hair. They were sexually liberated, they had freedom, it would be uh, drinking, smoking, dancing, wearing provocative clothing. Um, and maybe that's what she longs for, this sense of freedom. Maybe that's what the, the feathers in her hair signify. But we know her life is much different to that. When she tells Lenny that she ain't used to living like this, perhaps that might hint that before her life with Curly, she did have more freedom, like flapper girls, and she wasn't just trapped by life on the ranch, without any friends, without anybody to speak to, without her husband constantly looking to see where she's at. Bear in mind that we never actually see her and Curly together, um, at least not while she's alive. The only time we see them together is when she's laid dead after Lenny has broken her neck. So by shifting from the past tense coulda when she's speaking to Lenny to the future tense I will yet, it could imply that she hasn't lost hope for the future just yet and still hopes of dreams of escape in her confinement and becoming an actress. However, sadly we know the adverb darkly could hint, could foreshadow, could foreshadow her tragic end and the inability to pursue her dreams, which could signify how the women who have these dreams potentially are not going to achieve it. Um, and in ways, maybe foolish to think that they could. So Lenny, the last point that I'm going to make in relation to hope, um, is to think about how he ignites hope amongst people on the ranch, but in ways he also crushes it. Lenny remains relatively hopeful throughout the full novel, and unlike many of the characters, he doesn't have a sense of pessimism. Yes, he gets in trouble. He worries about getting in trouble with George, and he worries about if he gets in trouble, will that affect whether he gets the rabbits? Um, but on the whole, he, he does have dreams. And maybe he's the one that keeps the everyone else's dream alive. He does not understand how key events could jeopardise his hopes and dreams. For example, when he has the fight with Curly, he might have no um, understanding of the impact that could have other than George being angry with him. He might not think about how that could lead them to get canned, how it could lead to, to violence. 
uh, fear the violence. He doesn't really think about the knock-on effect of the consequences of his actions and how that could shift the dynamics. Um, you could argue that this is what keeps dreams alive for George, the fact that Lenny does believe in them until they're crushed at the very end. But it is not only George's dreams that he does crush. So although George talks um, about, oh, if I didn't have, like, Lenny is a burden, I could be out doing this, I could be out doing that. But ultimately, he might not have dreams for the future of owning his own ranch. He does say to Slim in Chapter 3 um, that, like, yeah, like, these men go out, they, they blow their stakes, they waste all this money and drinking at cat houses, but he's raising a stake with Lenny. Maybe if he didn't have Lenny there as a companionship, he wouldn't have that sense of drive to imp improve their current situation. Okay, indirectly, he crushes Candy's dreams by killing Curly's wife. Um, because the knock-on effect of that is that their dream of owning their own ranch is, is crushed. And Candy does question George, oh, does, does this, is this it for us? Um, so yeah, there's, there's no longer any prospect of Candy being able to escape the ranch he's at. And we know he's worried about being canned, uh, that he's getting older, can't do as much work. Um, and have a more, I guess, maybe stability as he would have with George and Lenny. We know he crushes Lenny's, uh, George's hopes at the end. He no longer has hopes for the future. If we could see into the future, um, what would George do without him? Would he have this ambition to raise a stake? Um, who knows? But Curly's wife, just as she is discussing her hopes, um, thinking about her, uh, her dreams, her dreams of being an actress, being on the shores. Just as she's talking about that, um, moments after Lenny breaks her neck. And that line when it talks about for Lenny who broken her neck, it could literally represent how he's, he, he's killed her, um, with his grasp on her neck. But also met metaphorically, that word broken could signify how he's broken her dreams and he's crushed those. Um, just as she has revealed them to Lenny and thereby us as readers. Well, okay, good luck with your revision on the theme of hope and of dreams. As you can see here, I've only looked at a few quotations. You would need way more than this to go away and explore. So good luck with that.